Whoa! Hello everyone and happy Halloween almost, kinda. Since I'm gonna be posting this on Friday, apparently. Uh, alright! Welcome back to more Just Please Birth Me Code. Um, we're back and we're gonna continue on with this path that we're on right now. Alright, here we go! Uh, this is right after our bar adventure. I propose we gather at the crossroads, crossroads instead of this location. You can go if you want, but someone needs to stay here to tell them about it. The older woman made a dismissive motion of her hand. Kula waved and left in a little bit of a hurry to get away from the two others. And Chorus stared, slightly puzzled at that behavior, before turning her attention to Avaricia. She's acting really strangely. It's almost suspicious, like she figured something out and we haven't yet. Anyway, you'll stay here then? Yes. You can go too if you want. You have a me card to find, right? Just go. And Korra solemnly nodded and left Avarishia's entourage too. Well, it's no longer an entourage now that no one's here. Her steps brought her toward the room Superbia and Tristitia shared. She had a thought of glancing inside to check up on their progress, but it was impossible. There was that metal plate over the door's window. Not only is this a search for a missing me card, it's also a search for someone to kill off somehow. It would have been so much easier to let someone else try to answer the question. Doing it first was so stupid! Instead of kicking herself over it, Ankora wandered further into the hallway. After the bend around the corner, she arrived at a dead end. On one side was the wall of plates, much like the ones that blocked half of the larger room at the bend. This was the back wall of the first hallway, the one they all emerged in from their triple classroom earlier. In the corner was a door. Above it, a sign read exit, but naturally it wouldn't work. First of all, this door was locked, but it led to a staircase that could normally access the second floor. And it has an emergency exit, but it's locked, like everything else. Leaving there is impossible right now. And Cora decided to head back to the others. She hadn't found a me card in this corner, but there was one past that door. Just wasn't time to open it yet. On the way back, making sure all classrooms were well and truly locked, she tried the L key to no avail. Might be mostly empty, some of them have stuff in them, like E cards. They're an extra step to force people to split up well inside well outside the rooms. And Cora almost made it back to Avaricia, but her trajectory was interrupted intercepted by Tristitia leaving his room. Hey Cora. You guys made it out first. You work hard. Yeah, thanks. I think we just got a little lucky. Ah, uh, well, we didn't. Uh, I don't know how to say it, so I'll just say it when we all group back together, I guess. Wait, who were you with? Superbia? Did you get her killed? We're going to the crossroads after we've all left our rooms. Maybe you want to head there now? Avaricia closed the distance, seeing as the two of them had been talking without her. That's right. I'm keeping guard here so everyone knows about it, but since cora has been looking for her me card, she's bumped into you first. Makes sense. Oh yeah, we had one extra, Cora. Here. Tristitia handed over a me card to Aunt Cora, who pocketed it without hiding her surprise. An extra card? Yeah. I'll meet you at the crossroads. Something's wrong. I've been having my doubts ever since he came out of the room, but there's something there that's definitely wrong. Without any other words, Tristitia made his way back through the hallway. And Cora cast a glance toward the door he'd come out of. She hadn't been quick enough to look at the situation in the room. Guess it's important. I got my me card now, so... Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'll wait for the groups here a little longer. Via, Vidi, and Lux still need to come out. Who is he with? Um. Alright, so if NVIDIA, Superbia, and Lux are in there, and Kula, and. Um. Kula and Avarisha were me. Who does that leave? No. 
don't even remember. Uh. Okay, yeah, it was with Super Weekend. Um, that's what I thought, but I was like, I thought it was 2 2, and then my group was 3, right? Okay. With a wave, she saw and Cora off. The blonde girl didn't need to be told twice. Her steps took her away from the older woman almost immediately. She didn't go all the way back. She waited close by, around the corner. Something nagged at her. Something really bad. Same kind of feeling when you think something is definitely amiss. She just wanted the confirmation. A few minutes later, Ankora heard the door open to Vidya and Luxuria's room close. She leaned forward a little after making sure nobody noticed she was eavesdropping. But that wasn't too bad, and honestly, I'm not surprised. It's like the answer was just there. And Cora missed the part where they said what the answer to their room was. Via still hasn't come out of her room, but the rest are at the crossroads. Really? Via's still there? What about Trist? He left a little while ago. He's already gone to the shotguns, if I had to guess. We do have a vote coming in. Very soon. The timer in Ancora's helmet indicated the vote was in barely ten minutes. But, well, I guess this is a worry right now. Even if, maybe, I shouldn't be too sad about it. What do you mean? What's sad? Look at your timer. Small pause followed, si followed. Silence from everyone involved. Yes, our vote's in ten minutes flat. Remember what me said? We only have 39 minutes to escape these rooms, right? Yeah, so? Oh! Oh. Oh, no. Small girl realized it. After a moment, it struck Ancora, too. Superbia! She didn't come out at all, and the timer's over now! She's dead! It seemed like such an abrupt end for her. Yet, even with her dead, something still bothered Ancora somehow. You know, it's... Kind of weird. This means we have another hour, right? But even so, I feel like... I don't feel sad or anything. I don't feel anything about it. Mia was also not the nicest person, I think. Well, it's desolating at any rate. But we can't do anything about it now. We do have an additional hour, so we can spend quite a lot of time thinking about how the votes will go. Only we could also confirm that she's dead. I didn't see her coming out, but she could have come out way earlier, before Trist. And he wouldn't have left the room? No, I don't think so. You said you stood guard here for the whole time, right? And no one came out? No one. Then she's dead. Let's go. And Cora heard footsteps coming in, so she hurried away. Thankfully, her own boots weren't noisy if she was careful, even on the solid flooring. She joined up with Gula and Tristitia. The two of them had been talking. When she arrived, the conversation ended. Judging by Gula's body language, and Cora guessed she was happy it was over. The others are coming. Alright, and I'll say what I wanted to say earlier to you two first. I realize that this is a bit ago, but we're nine people in total here. Well, it so happens that there's a thing in psychology called the Ene Enneagram of Personality. The Enneagram supposedly classifies everyone into main personality type, even if everyone takes from everyone else. If we can deduce who's what, we'll have an easier time determining who to vote for. Right, Tail, which personality would you proclaim you belong to? Ah, uh, you know of it too? Slightly. In my youth, I perused the dictionary an astounding lot. Well, I'd probably be the peacemaker type, which is the ninth type. The peacemaker? That's quite a stretch if you ask me. No, it's the only one that makes sense. I started categorizing us into types and... 
Before he could say any more, the others caught up with the three who had gathered for the vote. Okay, so this is really funny to me because it's like, you know, I don't know, doing this based on like astrology or like your um, fucking Myers-Briggs type or even more hilariously, if Trist came out here and was like, okay, I'm gonna figure out which one of us goes for which Homestuck aspect. <laughs> And that's how we're gonna decide who to vote for. It would be equally ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'd kind of be here for it. This theory is sound anyway, except it's not. Like, the problem with like categorizing people is that you don't know these people very well, and there's lots of things that you're not privy to. So that's why these fucking personality tests and shit like don't really work. <laughs> We're nine, and all of us correspond to a type or another. Maybe this makes me the investigator, also known as the observer type, then. For the next minutes, Tristitia explained what he was thinking about thinking about to the new arrivals, too. No one think it's suspicious he didn't mention Serbia was dead? After Tristitia was done, the group came together to decide on what was the next course of action. Hold up. First, we have something to say that's very important. We also came to a conclusion regarding... something... earlier. Oh, that... She shivered apprehensively, waiting for the verdict to fall. It was clear what the subject was. Even though we're not meant to know yet, there's been some eavesdropping going on. Yeah, well... Christ... Via didn't come out of your room, did she? That is correct. She did not come out of the room. Why is that? I don't need to explain my thinking, but I guess I can humor you. The slightly overweight boy began pacing around a little, somewhat nervously, but also strangely confidently. Earlier, I spoke about the Enneagram. Well, I only told you what I categorized myself under. But I'm pretty sure I'm spot on with Bia's categorization. And that's why I made sure she died. That? doesn't make any sense. She was a huge bitch to everyone, but how could you do that? What's her personality type? I'm not sure I should say, but there's more to each personality type than just the name. From what I found out in the room I explored with her, there was a very good reason related to her past. Trust me. Obviously, the group didn't exactly know what was up with Superbia's past or her situation in general. In fact, it didn't seem like anyone really had a, had memories of any time from before they woke up. If I told you what it was, you wouldn't believe me because it didn't fit. That's because when stressed, her type could grow prideful. Not only was she stressed, but if I had to guess, lording over others is nothing new to her. Remember how she treated Ira? The thought of the boy had slipped from everyone's minds. At that point, Ancora looked around. The body was gone. It wasn't in the crossroads anymore. It has a good point about Ira. However, why was the body gone? It doesn't make any sense. So, she was misusing her personality type. She became the corrupted version of it. My theory is that we're all more or less the corrupted version of our type, which brings us to this dilemma. If you had to pick someone to die right now, among all of us, excluding me, who would it be? I'm excluding myself from the equation because I'm the peacemaker, of course. The group looked at each other for a few moments. It didn't seem like anyone wanted to speak. Perhaps it was the fear of publicly outing someone that was preventing them. Perhaps it was also because they were debating if they wanted to call out a horse on his dishonesty. The one who broke the silence was Avaricia. I would probably vote for Lux. Luxuria took took her hands up, surprised, almost backing away from that accusation. The way that like the sprite worked, maybe it's just because I've been playing a lot of 14, but it was like the like surprise Lalafell emote. <laughs> what? Why? Why me? A feeling, I guess. We have to pick someone, and I'd probably go on that feeling right now. Of course, my mind can change on it. But I... I didn't... I didn't do anything! Maybe that's why she has that feeling. Either way, I asked, because no matter who you'd pick, you'd be right. 
We're all here to die. But me only said six of us would die. That's correct. That means we already lost three members. We have to kill three more. Which personality types are the most dangerous when corrupted, do you think? Uh... And Cora had to admit she didn't know much about the Enneagram of personality beyond just the names. I don't even know the names, man! Come on, cut me some slack here. She hadn't gotten to study those things yet. I like I like how, like, slapdash this is. I mean, it would make sense if, it, if you find out that the character you're playing as isn't actually Pandora and just thinks she's Pandora. That would be kind of, like, fine. And then, like, the other one that died at the beginning is technically Pandora and, like, faked her own death. Um, something like that would make sense or like you know the helmet is being piloted by somebody else i don't know but it's just man we're dumb <laughs> meanwhile tristitia seemed to have done a lot of research on the internet <laughs> he sure does all we have to do is get rid of that trio of most dangerous ones a revolver was aimed at the others out of nowhere you feeling lucky punk it was that it was then that the danger of the situation truly dawned on everyone. He just fucking admitted to murdering Superbia. Justicia had a gun, taken from someplace unknown. So that's it then. That's how this ends? He fired it once. Luxuria screamed. He fired it again. And Cora shielded herself with her arms. He fired it a final time. And then there was silence. Silence for three. Three others fell to the ground. And Cora watched as the scene happened in what felt like a small eternity. First, Avaricia's weight brought her to her brought her to fall. Then Invidia's weight collapsed him to the ground. Finally, Gula ended up in a heap, never to breathe again. Every shot of the gun had gotten them square in the heart. What happened? Everything happened so fast. You must be really good with revolvers. Dangerous. Luxuria couldn't even say anything. All she could do was stare. She was staring in pure bewilderment. Where before she'd screamed, now she was saying nothing. I I, I love I love the um I just I just wanted to go with like the, the paradise coming like Nani the hell? <laughs> uh <laughs> Her laughter was broken. The cute voice coming from her helmet spouted such strange laughter. It was going on and on. It was uncontrollable laughter. People laugh when things are funny, but they also laugh when they are anxious or fearful. That's why laughter therapy exists. The kind of laughter coming from Luxuria was not one made from a good joke. She was laughing because if she wasn't, she'd go completely mad. This is, this is insane, isn't it? I, I, I just, guys, I love this entire scenario because it's so funny to me. Trist is so hilarious. He's out here being like, I got a conspiracy theory about, you know, the cool S. And he's like, oh, we got, we're gonna shoot the rage player and the time player and, and the fucking void player, I guess. It's, the whole thing is so ridiculous. He's just like... <laughs> Fucking take a bullet, Slytherin. <laughs> this whole thing's so funny to me. I love it. <sighs> Lux! Snap out of it! Ancora suddenly grabbed the smaller girl by the shoulders, shaking her slightly. The girl ceased her laughter, and instead the reality of the situation dawned on her again. After a heavy shudder, the girl began to wail instead. Um... Yeah, yeah, we, we sure are. <laughs> the only one still alive. Okay. No! No! None of this is correct! None of it! Trist! You... You killed them! Just like that! And I'd do it again in a heartbeat if needed. Speaking of which, you're the one I can't categorize can't be a gentle peacemaker. The peacemaker is me. That's what I'm doing right now. 
and making peace. Yeah, okay, all right. I think you're confusing Peacemaker with Peace Walker, the um, Metal Gear Solid game. He waved over to the other bodies with an arm. Metal Gear game, I guess. He waved over to the other bodies with an arm. The Luxuria hiccuped in apprehension and fear. That's not making peace! He stood up to the overweight boy, even though he had a gun. That's just killing everyone! You're wrong. It's making peace for the few who remain. I mean, technically, sure. That's not killing everyone. This is killing everyone. Oh, shit. <laughs> Another shot rang out. The victim was clear this time. It was, it was Luxuria. And Cora shuddered and suddenly had a nauseating thought. He's coming. Run! Run before he shoots again! Hold on. He's shot four people so far, yeah? Alright, so if this revolver was fully loaded, then he would have six bullets. You guys were already fucked from the start, I guess. And if you were a worse shot, maybe not. Revolvers have six bullets. If they're fully loaded. Assuming he killed Superbia, that's five spent. He still got one. Well, that's assuming that's assuming that he shot Superbia. That's a, that's a pretty big assumption. Like, he could have just let her try to say the answer and fuck up. You know, <laughs> like that also is a thing he could have done. You just have to stall out one bullet. S Serpentine, Serpentine. No, no, do it the do it the DRK two way, like at the end of Danganronpa Kitty Kitty two, and you just get like, like uh, like Gula or somebody is, you know, you think she's been shot and killed, but she, like, raises her hand at the last minute and is, like, you know, casts an evil spell that jams the gun. Actual thing that actually happens in DRK2. That's how the climax gets resolved. And I love it. God. I wonder- I need to read more DRK5 and summarize it. Come on, Ankora. With that thought, nothing happened. It was already too late by that point. Even if Ankora turned around to sprint away, the shot caught her right in the back. Her body lunged forward and she rolled down the heavy cement stairs. Pain coursed through her. She must have fractured a bone. Or a few bones. As life slowly escaped her body, she had a thought. And that thought became 5, 10, 20. It was as though a voice was talking to her in, the fi in her final moments. And then she faded. Luxuria Directives, Alphabet and Water. Luxuria Directives, Alphabet and Water. Luxuria Directives, Alphabet and Water. We're making high dead soup. What we're doing. There's an ABC H2O. Please. Kill me. Okay, so we've hit another dead end, but that's fine because I wanted to kind of exhaust these for any. Alright. Let's take a look at our flowchart, folks. Uh, alright. So we. Oh, we haven't done these. That's right. We haven't gotten. I don't know how we get. To them. Uh, split here. Hopefully that will split. Like, just two trust choices into one. Goes here and goes down. Here. And I don't. Uh, hmm. Very curious. He got his ending. Um. Do I start again at the beginning and and go through and see if I can get the lux helmet? You know what I mean. Assuming that that's what I'm. All right. Let's go back. Let's choose a new file. Then we're gonna go here. Okay. 
Trust one. Superbia here. We're gonna talk. Uh. Yes. Box. Here. It gets me to six. Oh, I finally have the key to. Alright, so if I go here. Press two and this. And this opens up this. And. Oh, Solna. So I could. Could I go here? Let me go here. Correct. Right. Yeah. So A B C H two O. Alphabet. Oh, maybe it's the things that are same. Between them, what do we have? Okay, maybe it's things that are the same. So A be the same. Is... I don't know. I need a hint. The alphabet is shorter than A, B, C, H. There's no B and there's no C. Wait, I, I don't know. I gotta. Oh, okay, okay. A to Z. And. H two. We get two of them. It is the H. Eh. I was thinking maybe if there were two eyes, it could be like Roman girl two. I need to come up with another, another word for her? Maybe? What's up? <clears throat> hmm. Uh... All right, what if I'm thinking, all right, so Jay's it's here, it's like H one one zero. Ah, this one is much harder. For I don't know why. Yeah, it's H two O, so A A two Z. Unless it just wants me to pop a medical order, maybe? I mean I could try that too. Um
Okay. What if it's... Okay, and then maybe I go... Ooh, maybe? Okay, that one doesn't quite make sense to me, but okay. <laughs> sure. The establishment had shut its doors following the atrocities. I recall that as well. That is the backstory of the world-famous uh, Game of Our Time seminal uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> the, the, the seminal... Oh, uh, no. Now I'm trying to think of a fancy way to say five. <laughs> the V... God damn it, I just want to translate it to Japanese. It doesn't work. <laughs> five five rotations of the earth spent at the at the Italian establishment owned by Frederick Bear. <laughs> uh, let me enjoy, people. Just let me enjoy it. It constitutes the main reason for which I ponder upon the reasoning behind our presence in this disaster. Ula and Luxuria were together, as expected. Cow-themed girl was deep in the subject of the school's ruined appearance. If bombs went off in three wings out of four, why was the fourth one not destroyed? Perhaps the explosives were defective. I honestly cannot presume to even imagine... The two of them quieted a little as they approached the hallway they'd been they'd been in first. Passing by Yura and Superbia, they made they made like they didn't want to They made it seem like they didn't want the other two others to hear what they were talking about. Once they were in Wing A proper, Luxuria changed the subject. And what about Cora then? What do you think of her? Her helmet's the same as the girl we killed, huh? I beg you not to endeavor in revealing our actions to everyone. Refrain from speaking to that sordid outcome. Don't worry, Ula. Nobody can hear us here. Way too far from the rest of us. In that case, perhaps she has tricked us? No, that's impossible. The girl with us definitely died, headed like that. Perhaps your tour de force has shrunk in the up opposition down by a ninth. Yet, we should not squander the advantage we hold upon that personage. Xeria was examining the small room on the side, which didn't look like it had much in it. There was a large window beside it, but looking through it didn't reveal anything, since it was blocked off too. Changing the subject once again, Luxuria addressed Glow while pointing at the door. I want to get in there. You should do something about it. Do you truly believe I could remove this obstacle simply by wishing for its disappearance? Just use your giant chest to break through the door. Oh yeah, I mean, I do that all the time. That's how I open every door. And then people are like, how did you get in there? And I'm just like, fat tits. <laughs> Kula held an arm across her chest as if to block its view, an action that was bound for failure simply based on its size. Your fixation with my bus is becoming quite a nuisance, Lux. Never mind the fact you're definitely the real culprit behind that darkened areas of this article of clothing. Can you blame me for wanting to have a little fun? Besides, I didn't see you complaining before now. Ula hesitated a little before holding her hips con contemplatively. You are quite the impossible scamp, Lux. I'm a regret allowing you an iota of freedom. So long as it does not turn into complacency, I will assume the risk means anything, I am super thankful for that. Still, we should focus on the main thing at hand. Is that main thing just how cute you are? I still cannot get over how cute you are. Is it on purpose? 
few things such as you are dangerous, so I should really not let you play me like a fiddle, but can't help it. Yeah, we all been there. So cute that you're forgetting your usual vocabulary. Ah! That is correct. Apologies for that. I shall endeavor in not exposing myself so readily. That'll be hard with the clothes you have, I think. Lulu was definitely embarrassed at those words, both of, both of her arms uneasily crossing her own chest. The girl even averted her gaze for a short moment. These clothes, I am fully aware that they are not very flattering. Don't see me complaining, Ola. I don't know. I don't know if like, I'd say they're not flattering because they're pretty flattering, but like, <laughs> maybe you might not be comfortable. Oh, this is about to become kill a kill, Jesus. Besides, I like girls like you. <laughs> Stupid and cow themed? I don't know. I like them a lot. You understand what I'm saying? Cow themed girls' embarrassment grew tenfold at that. A long pause followed the admission. Luxuria noticed, eventually clearing her throat. Ah, sorry, I uh, shouldn't have been so forward. N no, 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 it's okay. It's perfectly fine, though I, um. I don't really, uh, swing that way. Yeah, sure, mm-hmm, yeah. You with your braids. Whatever. Did you ever try? Somebody like me, I mean. <laughs> um, not really. Life is full of possibilities, Ola. If you haven't tried, can you truly say you don't like it? Besides, I'm cute, right? It should be fine, then. What am I even watching? Um, good shit, Cora. Shut up. <laughs> For a moment, it looked as though Luxuria might have gotten through to Gula. Latter side as if admitting defeat. Perhaps. You truly are dangerous, aren't you? But I believe we have more important things to focus on, such as the unearthing of an escape route. Okay, so <laughs> I just have to... I'm always going to fucking plug this comment because I've, I've always found it hilarious. But back when I was in college, many, many, many years ago, um, I like was really into web comics for a long time. And yes, I fucking know. I get it. But I, uh, <laughs> it was the early 2000s. Cut me some fucking slack. <laughs> so anyway, um, there was one of them that I really liked. And uh, it was like this like saucy, like not safe for work comic, but it was also like really funny. And it was taking a bunch of like porn tropes and sort of like... Um, spinning them on their heads to make them funny and one of the uh recurring characters her name was chibi sue and so like she was like this chibi and she was um always like super frustrated because like she just wanted to get laid and uh everybody was like "Ooh, no you look like a kid <laughs> and so like it's kind of the vibe i'm getting with lux um and i had wanted to mention that earlier like in one of the previous like episodes and i was like man how do i how do i bring this up like without making it sound like it's, it's like, you know, completely coming out of nowhere. So thank you game for giving me, for, for validating the, the weird Chibi Sue vibes. I was kidding. <laughs> Let's talk it about, talk about it again later then. Bonk. Pinky swear. Girl, Pinky, Jesus. Not even the finger you should be using. But pinky swear. The duo resumed their search by entering a nearby unlocked classroom. Looking around the place, the two of them turned everything over. They did find a me card hidden inside the teacher's desk. How strange. But maybe I should leave it here. Pray elaborate on the reasoning behind that ridiculous notion. I'm I'm thinking we could use it to our advantage. This is an additional me card for us later, and if not. Then at least it's a way to keep everyone in here, since we won't get 39 cards without this one. To keep everyone incarcerated? I could understand the thought, but for which purpose? It feels like it would be more fun if we make full use of these six hours, no? Jesus. I find myself somewhat reticent. Your inactions never cease to bring me the utmost worry, Lux. Both for the others and my own self. And are you sure you don't want to date me still? I can guarantee you just one date will let you know all you want let you know all about what it's like like with people like me too. Worry not, Lux. I uh suppose I can ponder on that embarrassing subject just for you. 
my other my other thing too is and like i don't really have much to go off on this but i kind of like eh, i'll bring it up later if it becomes apparent um it's one of those things where i'm just like hmm is this indicating one thing that i think it might be or am i projecting or you know so we'll we'll save on that for a little bit and see if we get anything more but um yeah it was a thing that i was thinking about and i was like eh, i don't know i don't know how i would feel about it <laughs> if it plays out that way so we'll see um but yeah i uh <laughs> you may be a slutty by stereotype lux but you know what <laughs> i love my slutty by stereotypes um i remain unconvinced for now however so please pardon my self-imposed exclusion Zuri has proven to be the proverbial thorn in my side oh i see what you did there Perhaps it's a good idea to try and steer the group towards voting her out. She's clearly winning Gula over already. They're too close, and she's the boss. Just like Gula keeps repeating, Luxuria is looking extremely dangerous right now. She's the reason why the ninth one died, huh? All of a sudden, frequency switched, interrupting the feed which cut and restored to Ankara's helmet. Alright, so let's see if any of this is the same or different. Um, deadlock. I think I, I think I, this should be all the same. I think the point at which it's like somewhere. This is one thing that I don't like about this style of um, visual novel is that like I need it to just do a thing where it's gonna forward and then it's there's gotta be a flag or something that when it's unique dialogue that hasn't been played in that particular save file before, you need to fucking stop. <laughs> like so so that I can just skip shit I've already seen. And not miss other stuff. And I get it, it's why you get the log, but come on. We're overlooking something here. The choice might apparently be between myself and Bia, but there's someone else who's suspicious. What are you talking about? Oh my god! Actually, fucking, um... Kelly! Kelly updated! There's a new, uh, Liam Sullivan video with Kelly doing, like, a Zoom call with her family for Halloween. And it's good, and you should watch it. In detective novels, when you get to the end, the culprit is always someone you don't suspect. If you think about it that way, this means someone in our group is much more suspicious than they were originally appeared. And I know three things that will make that person super suspicious. Uh, which would be... Out with it already! Time's a tickin'! The entire group was willing to give Ancora's theory a listen, since no one interrupted her either, other than Superbia. Well, um... I don't know how to explain this. But someone in our group has already committed murder. This time, even Superbia remains silent. Everyone was waiting for Ancor to speak. Be more specific. I mean, like, 
not long ago. Earlier, in fact. Do you remember how Lux and Ula left their room without a third party? Are you perchance accusing us of having committed the villainous crime of murder? Aw, oh, I wish she had said slaughter there. The villainous crime of slaughter. <laughs> Intentional slaughter. Premeditated murder. Superbia answered promptly, interrupting Gula. I always thought that was super suspicious. She is quick to agree. That's a little strange and merits investigation, but that's for later. There's a bigger fish to fry right now. The puzzle wasn't even that hard to put together, either. The answer was clearly my emptiness, so why did they get it wrong and die? Is it because someone hid parts of the answer? This line of inquiry is a falsification of the truth. Oh, I guess you're British, so it'd be like, This line of inquiry is a falsification of the truth. The third member of our group died from a wrongful answer, and it was their mistake. I don't know about that, but... I think, at best, someone caused that death to see if things were dangerous for real. Like a guinea pig. Anyway, there are two other things. We'll look quiet it again. She was possibly weighing her options and opposing that thought. Luxuria said nothing the whole time, not being one for confrontation. The second thing is that Lux and Ola are quite close together. So close that I think they're violating social distancing. Sorry. I think they're forming a team, and that's dangerous, isn't it? For the votes? It means they have power. No, we're not. We only explored we only explored the school together earlier, and even if I do that, I wouldn't do much anything bad, I swear. Superbia cleared her throat and spoke. She was still jumping at any opportunity to pin votes on anyone other than her. Was slightly grating to Ancorus, and she wanted to finish putting forth her arguments. We can't be sure of that. Reminder, we're all in my emptiness here. You're the calmest, coolest, most innocent butterfly of the group. Like hell! Cuteness is a weapon, too. Can't say how it'll go. That's correct. Sorry, Lux, but we have to think about that, too. No, oh, it's okay. I'm just doing what's logical. But sometimes logic isn't worth anything, you know? Unlike the rest of the ones talking to her, Luxuria adopted a stance based on emotions. <laughs> sometimes you can't deduce everything with logic. It doesn't make a lick of sense. Like just how you're making these wild guesses about Ula and me too. You can't know any of the things Korra says, can you? Well, that's true. Aren't you confirming them now? Luxury well, took a small pause to mull that over. And Cora was right. She was falling for the bait. So what, then? What does it matter if I confirm it? Maybe I like Ula. I'm sure you people like others, too, and that doesn't make you into a, into a murderer. Superbia remained silent, not wishing to get in the way of the little debate. Everyone had forgotten they were on a tight leash time-wise. Lux, that's enough. Other topics merit our attention. Kula tried to quiet Luxuria, almost visibly embarrassed, but she wanted to hear none of it. And besides, why am I under such scrutiny right now? You still haven't answered that, huh? I'm small, is that why? You're picking on me because I'm small? No, just because I know as a small person that we are fucking vicious. No, it's because you've been meddling with this thing we're a part of. For all we know, you two murdered the ninth person in cold blood, but I'm suspecting you way more than Ula. What's it to you, big tits? Insults flew to Ancora, all of which quickly grew into a tantrum. I mean, a lot of people here have pretty, pretty big tits, I'm just saying. Like, that's not necessarily an insult that merits, like one particular person over another. How does everyone know I'm blonde? My hair's on a fucking helmet. Fucking, fucking, somebody lump that, please. Blonde normie girl with big tits? What do you want? Pick it on me like that. You really want to pin this on me that bad, huh? You found a me card, didn't you? Yeah, and I used it. No, I mean, in a teacher's desk, within an empty classroom, found a me card and told no one. Something like, 
it feels like it would be more fun if we make full use of the six hours. No. A chilly pause so glacial it could have rivaled the North Pole settled after Ancora said those words. It took a few moments for her to understand that she said something she definitely couldn't have known. Oh no. I shouldn't have been thinking that much about what I've seen when I hacked into Luxuria's helmet. Dude, just play it off that you were fucking, like, following. Now it's too late since the topic's already brought up. God, we're so stupid. Guess I'll just have to think something up. They all hesitated. Gula silently pushed a button on her console as if to vote early. It wasn't clear for whom yet. Luxuria eventually broke the awkward pause, but... But the time it took for her to refute it was already telling its own story. I never said that! Pronounce to it, Lux. She's clearly aware of the events that transpired. No, not how or why, but even you should admit defeat where due. No way! I won't admit defeat because I'm not defeated. You're all going with this? How crazy is this, really? She's just spouting a bunch of nonsense. The small girl smashed her hand against the console, the sheer strength behind it causing a worrying cracking noise from it. Maybe it's best to sit back and watch how things go now. Uh, you were using your cuteness to manipulate us, and I don't like that. But only if all that was true. Can't see why Cora would lie. Because her stupid big chest is under fire. That's why she needs to lie. I uh, agree with whatever Bia is proposing. You guys, we have 20 seconds left. You're making a mistake. It's Cora who should die. She's the one manipulating you. Sorry, but all we have is stuff against you. And if she lies about it, we'll deal with her too. Just like we're dealing with your little bitch ass. Horse and the lion entered their vote, followed by the rabbit after a brief pause with her hand on the buttons. With this many stacked against her, Luxuria lost her mind. This isn't what it was supposed to be! You're making a big mistake! Nvidia put his vote in. And just like that, everyone had voted except for Ancora and Luxuria. Ladder's still screaming bloody murder. This isn't fair! I'll... I'll get you for that. I'll take you all on. I'll break you and I'll make you take your last breath. You're all gonna die, even if I die! I told you, like, small people were full of fucking rage. I'll come back and... Would you please shut up? Digging your own grave even deeper. Or I'll vote and let it be done. And you! You, Korra! Not even hell is a place for what I'll do to you! Ignoring the girl's words, and Korra voted. The screens above the voting console settled in onto luxurious symbol. It was clear what was to follow. It was her execution. Every shotgun but the victims released their hold, uh, leaving the participants to witness the macabre outcome. It took only a moment for the gunshot to come. It sounded like it had shot Luxuria at point-blank range, but in reality, there were no bullet holes in the helmet she wore. Time slowed down. Eventually, everything froze. Snake. Hello. Who are you? I don't know. Some say my name is Pandora. Hi, Pandora. I'm dead, aren't I? Depends on who you are. Oh, right. Who am I? I think... Name was something like... Marco? No, I don't think so. That sounds wrong. Oh. I don't know. I don't remember. You don't remember your name? I know your name. It's Nico. Oh, fuck you! Get fucked. Get so fucked! Nico, that's cute. No, it's not. Fuck off. I've just been trolled by this fucking game. I hate everything. I was cute then, I take it? Yes, very cute. That's a good thing. At least I was cute and people loved me. I don't know if it's such a good thing. Huh? What do you mean? Don't you want to be cute too? I don't need to be cute. What I mean is... 
Cuteness is both a gift and a curse. Maybe you think people liked you for you, but... Maybe they only liked you because you were cute. Oh, that does sound bad, yeah. How do you know if it's one or the other? I don't think there really are signs. Though, if people gave you a pass because you were cute... Pass? Like what? Who let you get away with horrible things because you were cute? Isn't that what happened to you? Ah, maybe. Now that you're mentioning it. That's true. People trusted me a lot because I was cute. Remember that now. So you weaponized your cuteness, didn't you? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. It's not like it matters to me now that I'm dead. You never know. But you're right. Whatever you did, people forgave you. Whatever you said, people deafened themselves. It was all because you were cute. In reality, what was inside wasn't so cute, was it? No, I guess not. I wasn't cute on the inside. I have hatred. A lot of hatred. It's boiling over. No, you don't need more. Now you're dead. I'm running out of time. Out of time? That's right. You have to pass on sometime. Let's see. Right again. Yes, I'd like to pass on. Will it be scary? Who knows? I've never passed on. Hopefully I'll make it through just because I'm cute. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. You've surrendered your right to live. Now carry your memory. Thanks. God, I'm so mad! Oh, you think you're full of hatred? No! Me! Me! I am full of hatred! Me! Tiny Jess mad! Oh, fuck off with that. Go. Get the fuck out of here. Ah! Ah! Mother. Well, I hope everyone fucking enjoys that reveal. <laughs> what was that all about? As time resumed its flow, the aftermath of the vote's outcome rang through Ancora's head again. Among the group was a dead body. No longer on its solid two legs, it had fallen limp against the surface of the floor below. Due to the state of the body, the survivors were looking at each other, unsure if Luxuria had truly passed on. That thought was eclipsed from everyone's mind when a sudden explosion completely obliterated the small one's head. Dust and smoke filled the air, giving the terrifying scene an even chillier atmosphere. Luxuria's final moments in front of the shotgun she had been thrashing about. The position of the body made it look more grotesque than it really was. The neck was also a pool of red, a pool that none of the survivors dared approach. Droplets had splattered all over the ground, remnants of the horrible blast. All of them were drying already, staining the floor with the ichor of Or the ichor of death. Well, I mean, it's life when it's inside, and it's death when it's outside. However, Angkor wasn't dealing with any of the sights. She was looking elsewhere. She was looking left and right. She was in a state close to hyperventilation. She had seen things she didn't recognize. She had heard a voice that couldn't have spoken. She was completely lost in her head, capable of understanding what had transpired. What was that? What was that vision? Vision? That wasn't a vision. That was real. Right? And Cora shook her head. Others approached her. She pushed them away with an arm in her confusion. Don't touch me! Motherfucker. I've seen her. I've heard her. I, I even know her real name. It's Nico. How? What's going on? What did you see? Something weird? I spoke to her! No, it, it wasn't me! It felt like it was me, but it wasn't me! She breathed in loudly, and then she calmed down. This was making her look like a freak. Ancora could see Superbia and Aira leaving the group to deal with whatever madness had taken her. I know you don't want to believe me, but there was something... Maybe it's the helmet! 
It just came to me. When she died, it's like we... connected? Don't be ridiculous now. That's impossible. The girl felt like an abyss was growing in her stomach. The fact NVIDIA, Nvidia didn't trust her enough to believe her was eating at her. Perhaps we're going down a dangerous road by insisting on this vision. Maybe leaving it aside will be for the best. The only person in the group who remained close to the dead body was Gula. She was kneeling beside it, as if she were regretting the outcome in some fashion. That makes sense. Luxuria had been close before. You aren't making any sense. Hey, Via, Kira, Come back here, will you? We have to decide what we're going to do now. We need some order in the group where anarchy will remain. What we're doing? Isn't it obvious? And Cora asked the question, but her vision faded right afterward. Very soon, everyone's helmets displayed that fake environment again. He wasn't done giving them instructions. Greetings once more! I am sure you'd rather not see me again, not after the vote and your forced witness of a dead body. I would like to remind you that there will be five more in total today, other than this one, so you should strap yourselves in. Carnage isn't over yet. Arf. Fortunately for you, now you have an hour of respite. Please use your time well. We'll be heading towards more of those education rooms now. If you'd remember the room you woke up in, or a little like that. All the me cards are hidden further inside. To progress, you'll have to unlock the door leading to the hallway, much like how you've unlocked the previous one. That is correct. Another puzzle awaits you. Hopefully you didn't kill off your best puzzle solver yet, or else you would regret it now. The timer inside of Ancora's helmet read exactly four hours remaining. Once you've made your way inside, you will have to split up into three groups. You may be one, two, or three in a group. The very moment four people enter the same classroom, they all surrender their right to live. Each classroom has an assigned subject for you to study and a question to answer. The subject in question will be given to you personally by me after 39 seconds have elapsed since the door's room has been opened, which is also when it'll close and lock. Don't you feel smarter by learning various subjects? Another smart thing to do, not opening the doors until you're ready to go in, otherwise it'll lock you out for 39 minutes. Please remember that once you enter a room, you will also only have 39 minutes before you surrender your right to live. Time is of the essence, and I will stop taking it from you for now. From now on, I will only appear to give you each room's subject as you enter them. I wish all seven of you good luck, and don't forget, I'll see you later. Then the image faded once more, and Ancora's vision was replaced with the real world again. She looked at Tristitia. He took an uneasy pose, no doubt thinking all that information over. Before Ancora could resume the topic, Gula and the others approached her, hounding her Tristitia stead. Great enunciate yourself, Cora. Far from me to entertain the veracity of such senseless thought, yet I am curious about the vision. What transpired it? All of Ancora's previous instability came back at once, hitting her like a truck. It's... I saw her. Lux. Or Nico. I spoke to her. I spoke to Nico, you horrible, poor baby. I spoke to her, and she said she was dead. But it wasn't me. It was me, but it wasn't me. Superbia and Ira had come back at Tristitia's demand, both of them looking upon the wreck that Ancora had become. What are you talking about? You aren't making any goddamn sense. I don't really get it either. But, uh, shouldn't we get a move on and start making up teams like what he said? NVIDIA agreed to that course of action, so did Tristitia. And Cora was still almost hyperventilating, but by now the group was more focused on their own survival than her state of being. I saw her, I swear! Okay, okay, well, whatever. Well, look, we have to make the groups now, so either you come with all of us or you're going in there alone. But you can't come with all of us, actually. He said we have to split up, but we can't bring more than three people in one room. I think if we're to explore three rooms again, then we have to split three, two, two. We can always make two groups of three and one stays alone. Wouldn't that be quite sad for her, however? As much as I want to be nice, it's not really my problem, to be honest. 
as much as I want to agree with you, Ira, we do have to keep our teams balanced because we have to get those me cards from inside. It would be stupid to send this insane bitch alone just to have her unable to bring the me cards to us. Yeah, okay, sure. So let's make three teams of two and we'll bring her with one of them, I guess. How are we going to determine that? I didn't say to bring her along either. Isn't it just better to leave her out if she's going to be a problem? It's not like we all have to go in, right? Furbia's voice slowly died off in the distance. And Cora wanted to prove that she wasn't insane. While they debated over the teams, the girl made her way down to the doors adjacent to the set and hoped to get to the crossroads. It looked much like the other set when it was closed. Firm push proof she wasn't going to open them by any other way than a puzzle. It was, of course, what had been planned, so nothing out of the ordinary there. Is Marco, I guess, the guy who's, like, programming everything? And maybe, like, he's the one who's actually the mastermind? I don't know. Uh, next to the doors, the panel was containing a square puzzle, much like the one she'd previously solved. It wasn't the same puzzle. Obviously. Good way to prove to them otherwise is to solve the puzzle. If that's done, then they'll have no choice but to realize no one's insane here. At least, that was the thought. And Cora stood in front of the two doors alone. With a sharp inhale, she looked at the panel and started solving it to open them. Did, is no one curious? Like, is Gula not curious how we knew exactly what was said in the room when they were by themselves? Like, for real? <laughs> like, we're not gonna follow up on that, I guess? I don't know. It's, uh, kind of weird. And weird. Oh, this is, like, not actually the same puzzle. Hmm. Period. Let's put M's all around and see what happens. M-Town. M's all around. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, E. Me. Oh, I see. Dura. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I guess I have to bring it up. Where are the other ones? Unless this one's short. I don't know, like, what the typeface is for the team, but I'm assuming it's like, because right now it's like blip, blip. So this one. this one. Am I missing another M? No, right? There we go. Okay. God, that one was so much easier in the fucking water. <laughs> was it supposed to be water is in like Nagare? Like the flow? You know? The doors unlocked when Ankora finished solving the puzzle. Giving one of them a light push, she confirmed they could be opened and left their immediate area to head back to six other survivors. The entire process had taken a few minutes, yet when she rejoined them, it didn't take long for her to understand the discussion about how to handle the team still wasn't over. First of all, we should make the teams. So then we can decide what we do with her. Okay, that's fair, I suppose. How do we divide, though? You and Bia are adamant about going together. Won't that be unbalanced? It would be. We all need to have a team that has someone good at solving those rooms. It would be Vidi and me. Well, it can't be that bad either if they escape their room too. Unless the one who was good at, at it was good was in fact the one who died, which begs the question why they died at all. Though, Pool has been unresponsive for a while now anyway. We're going in a circle. You want me and Bia to split? That's fine, I guess. Furbia didn't like that, and she glared at the two that were trying to split her up from Ira. Inquira chimed in before the situation deteriorated further. 
I open the doors. Puzzle, that is. It's solved now. Ah, you're back. I noticed you'd left a little earlier. There's a definitive change to NVIDIA's tone toward her. Not sure how much I can count him as an ally anymore. Maybe it's best to be wary. Yeah, well, I thought it would be a good idea to do that while you all talk. It's not like you'd have given me a chance to explain myself. That you'd be willing to believe me without thinking I'm weird. Vidya scratched the back of his head a little, as if he were embarrassed about his behavior towards her. Justitia didn't put so much as a veil over his own beliefs. That's true. But still, solving the puzzle is good. See? She's still good. She's not gone mental. She can come with one of our teams. Heh, <laughs> whatever. What are the teams like in your head, oh great horseman man? Maybe something like... First team would be Vidi and Ula, second would be myself and Bia, third would be you, Ava, and Cora. You think I'm going to group with you? Yes, what if I think so? What if we do have to balance ourselves out this way so we actually all live? As if, your most of your common survival really matters. I know you don't give a shit about anyone else, Bia, but if we die, you die too. We keep repeating that too. Will you get it already? He didn't sound too pleased with her, but she just shrugged nonchalantly, as if it truly had nothing to do with her. Fine then. You're right. Happy now? No, not really. I won't be happy until all this is over. Have we decided yet then? I don't really have a preference one way or the other. As far as I'm concerned, I feel more like an observer than a real participant right now. Ah, right, sorry. I didn't really consult you when thinking those teams over. She dismissively waved in the air. No, it's fine. Like I said, I don't have a preference. She get a move on. Remember our time is ticking down and it's not going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> My time is not going to stop at all. We will if we don't hurry. We're close to the t we're close to 10 past the hour. Let's go. The group was for the major part in agreement. Willa had remained almost completely silent since Luxuria had died. After a second or so, she decided to join them again, still mute to all attempts at conversation on the way. It was like she didn't really know what she was going to do anymore. As they set off toward the new set of doors, and Cora... Oh, jeez. Alright! Here we go! Let's stop here, and you guys can decide uh, who I talk to slash walk with next time. Do I want to try and comfort Gula? Do I want to talk to Trist? Or do I want to talk to Ira? Um, it's up to you guys. Tell me in the comments what you want me to do, and we will go with that the next time we're there. Um, the one with the most votes wins. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, that's going to be it for this week. And, and next week, hopefully, I'll be able to actually get some shit done. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. This is going to be kind of a little bit of a busy weekend, but we'll see. All right, everybody. Thank you. Uh, happy Halloween. Maybe I'll do something for Halloween, something kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you later and have a great weekend. Bye. Short people got no reason. Short people got no reason. Short people got no reason to live. They got.